Hello everybody, I want to greet and thank the audience of this short conversation. We will talk about robotic as a bridge between Italy and Japan. The interview aims to identify the most active line of research in the field of robotics, which in Japan has seen one of the most active countries since the birth of this technology field. We will talk about not only industrial robots that are well known and represent a very widespread and consolidated technology, but also about service robots, whose field of application are growing rapidly. I am Giuseppe Quaglia, uh, professor at the Department of Mechanics and Aerospace Engineering of Politecnico di Torino. I am here with uh, Professor Yukio Takeda, connected from Tokyo Institute of Technology, Japan. Hello, Yukio. Hello. My research and teaching activity is mainly related to robotics, mechatronics, automation, mechanism, device for disabled people, and the appropriate technology and system for sustainable human development. I have also some uh, institutional role as a deputy chair of IFTON Italy, uh, chair of IFTON Technical Committee for Sustainable uh, Energy System, member of uh, Siri Council, and Siri is uh, the Italian Association of Robotic and Automation, a member of the management board of Politecnico Interdepartmental Center for Service Robotics. So, Professor Takeda, can you introduce yourself, uh, summarizing your main research and teaching activities? Hello, everyone. I'm Yukio Takeda, a professor of mechanical engineering at Tokyo Institute of Technology. My research interests include kinematics, dynamics, control, and machine elements of robotic mechanical systems with special attention to parallel robots and assistive devices. Until now, in my laboratory, several parallel robots have been developed for manipulation, machining, pipe bending, positioning, haptic devices, and gate training. As for robotic assistance, several devices for walking assistance, rehabilitation of wrist, finger, and ankle, and fall prevention have been developed. As well as these developments of robots, theoretical researches on kinematics and the dynamics of machinery have been conducted. In the undergraduate and graduate programs of the university, I have several courses related to machine design and robot kinematics. I am a member of several academic societies, such as the Japan Society of Mechanical Engineers, Robotics Society of Japan, and IFTOM. We met uh, thanks uh, to IFTOM, that is the International Federation for the Promotion of Mechanism and Machine Science. Founded in uh, 1969, IFTOM is a world-based scientific community for future smart mechanical devices. It has 45 international member organizations and uh, 14 technical committees, three permanent commissions and four cross-disciplinary groups uh, for interdisciplinary exchange. Professor Takeda, can you remember the birth of our collaboration? Yes, sure. Uh, we discussed how to strengthen the collaboration between IFTOM Italy and IFTOM Japan when we met at an international conference of IFTOM, Mechanism Design for Robotics, called MEDAR 2018, held in Udine, Italy. And then, uh, we promoted the collaboration between these two national member organizations of IFTOM with the aims shown here. Since then, we actually achieved several things shown here, such as participation in the conferences held in each country, exchanges of PhD students, and so on. Thank you. I would like to, now to introduce some uh, uh, specific team uh, of this meeting. Robotic is uh, one of the most uh, challenging research topics in these years. Technologies are changing and the number of applications is growing, both considering industrial robots and service robots. I would like to give some data provided by International Federation of Robotics that was founded in uh, 1987 and that want to connect the world of robotics around the globe. The general purpose of uh, IFR is to promote research, development, and international cooperation in the entire field of robotics. If you look uh, at uh, the data coming from uh, reports, World Robotics 2021, the annual installation of industrial robots, 
are close to 400,000 and represent a big market that has shown a strong growth over the past 10 years. The world of robotics is growing very strongly in non-industrial applications where the so-called service robot operate. What is a service robot? Really, there is a technical definition that says it is an actuated mechanism programmable in two or more axes, moving within its environment to perform useful tasks for humans. But really, service robots are the robots that are not industrial ones. And observing the growth between 2019 and 2020 in the main application sectors that are logistic, cleaning, medical, hospitality and agriculture, we understand the impressive growth dimension of the phenomenon that we are observing. Professor Takeda, can you give us your opinion and perspective from a point of view based on Japanese context? Yes. Uh, focusing on Japan, uh, the situation of industrial robots can be described by, the, by this data supplied by IFR. Uh, that's uh, the stock of the operation robots is increasing by 5% or more every year. As for the production, though the number of the units decreased a little bit in 2020 from 2018, 19, it covers 45% of the global robot production. As for the service robotics, I'd like to show some data of Japan. As can be seen from the table in the left, Japan is already a super-aged society based on the fact of the ratio of the population of aged people to the total population. And the ratio will continue to increase until 2060. Therefore, the lack of the number of working age people and the heavy burden of the working age people to support the age people are the big social problems in Japan. For these problems mentioned now, utilization of robots is one of the key issues, and especially the development of useful service robots is strongly demanded. The figure shows the current status and future expectation of robot market it is clear that the market of service robots will be greatly increased. Thank you. <laughs> uh, now I would like to provide some more specific information about uh, Italy and Japan. Robotics in Italy has a long tradition, both from the point of view of manufacturing companies and related association. For example, we have Siri, that is an Italian association of robotic and automation. It was uh, the second association in the world to be founded after the Japanese one. And uh, Siri has a scientific, cultural and informative purpose. Siri wants to contribute to the progress of robotic and related techniques in its scientific and technical aspect, bearing in mind its interdisciplinary character. Another association uh, is the National Institute for Robotic and Intelligent Machine, IRIM, that was founded in 2019. The IRIM purpose is to promote the development and practice of robotics and intelligent machine and the, the creation and strengthening of national stakeholder group. Recently, IRIM promoted also the PhD program of national interest in robotic and intelligent machine. Professor Takeda, can you give us an overview of robotics in Japan? Yes, uh, let me introduce the Japan Robot Association called JARA. Uh, JARA was incorporated almost 50 years ago. Its aim is to further the development of the robot manufacturing industry. Currently, uh, 55 uh, companies, this means almost all the robotics related companies, uh, become the member of JARA. Uh, one of the uh, activities of JARA, uh, I would like to introduce the international exhibition held every two years in Tokyo called IREX. This, uh, from this slide, uh, you can uh, see that uh, the fact of the one held this year. From this information, it is known that it is a huge international event of robot uh, industry. Actually, I participated in this exhibition my, pre my impressions are summarized in this slide. I felt the strong trend on development of collaborative robots, which work together with human workers. 
This targets the coexistence of human workers and robots by appropriately sharing the task, not, on, uh, not for the fully automated system. As a recently improved technologies, several technologies based on big data, IoT, and AI, and the development of new robotic technology products were found in this exhibition. The keywords were summarized as human-friendly, zero-down time of factory, and sustainability, which clearly reflect the social background. As for the academic societies and the groups in robotics in Japan, I'd like to introduce the Robotics Society of Japan. It has almost 40 years history and always very active. As shown in this slide, a number of presentations and participation participants in the annual conference is large and it's, it publishes journals in Japanese and English. The Robotics and Mechatronics Division of the Japan Society of Mechanical Engineers is also very active, but due to the limitation of time, I don't induce it today. Now to be more concrete, we can show some research topic in the robotic field developed at Politecnico di Torino and at Tokyo Tech. All these solutions are linked to one or more sustainable development goals established by the United Nations Agenda 2030. The robot Pakitop is a lightweight mobile manipulator for indoor assistive application in both home and hospital environment. And it is linked to sustainable development goal number three, good health and well-being. It has an omnidirectional mobility and it can be equipped with different tools and sensors according to the specific application. For example, it can measure temperature, pressure and many more. It has a six degree of freedom robotic arm to interact with environment and humans. The second service robot that I want to show is AgriQ, dedicated to sustainable agriculture. It is an electric vehicle mainly devoted to one-yard mapping and monitoring. It has an excellent mobility and the use of eight wheels reduce the soil degradation. The locomotion unit is able to overcome the obstacle and the AgriCo has an orientable photovoltaic panel for improving its autonomy. That can also be used as a landed platform for drones. It has also a collaborative robotic arm for sample collection. AgriCo is mainly related to Sustainable Development Goal number 12, Responsible Consumption and Production. Uh, those research were done in the frame of uh, Polytechnic Interdepartmental Center for Service Robotics. So, Professor Takeda, can you illustrate some Tokyo Tech case study and some results of our scientific collaboration? Thank you very much. Okay. Uh, first, I'd like to introduce our research on parallel robots. In order to support the development of parallel robots for high speed, high precision, and high payload operation with high reliability, which will contribute to the sustainable development goals uh, number 8, 9, and 12, we have conducted researches on these topics uh, shown in the slide. Another case study in Tokyo Tech is related to the rehabilitation devices development. In order to support highly aged society, we are developing simple, low cost, and easy to use assistive devices for several applications. The slide shows one of the examples. Thanks to the nice mechanical design, an anchor rehabilitation device, which can be easily attached and detached to the user, has been developed based on the collaborative research with the company. And through several steps, this medical device is already in the market. We hope this will contribute to the welfare of the society. The research collaboration between the groups of Professor Correa and us is focused on the development of rehabilitation devices. And thanks to uh, it, some devices were conceived. In the near future, we have also planned an exchange of young researchers in order to carry on research activities. 
This slide shows the prototype and the design of these three rehabilitation devices, which have been designed by our joint research. Our joint research has been conducted through online according to the COVID-19 situation. However, we are now preparing for the face-to-face -face collaboration using a government support. This slide shows the information of the postdoctoral fellowship for research in Japan, supported by the Japanese Society for the Promotion of Science. There are four programs for postdocs. Among them, we apply for the short-term program. We hope, the, uh, we hope that the application will be accepted and real collaboration activity in Tokyo will be realized. Thank you so much for all this information. Uh, and so, do you think that uh, Italy and Japan uh, could strengthen the joint uh, research on robotics? Yes, yeah, sure. Uh, in my opinion, the strength uh, of persons in each country is different. As can be seen from the history of industry development, it can be said that Japan has strengths in improving the quality of the products while Italy has strongest in novel design. Uh, thus, the collaboration by the researchers in Italy and Japan makes a lot of sense to cover the whole process of development of innovative products and robots. So, thank you so much. Uh, and uh, closing uh, this talk, I'm also glad to remember that Tifton World Conference 2023 will be organized uh, by Japan Council of IFTOM in Tokyo. It will be a great opportunity to exchange results and uh, to start new activities. The World Congress will be held in the central Tokyo Shinjuku in November next year. We expect to have more than 500 participants with a lot of technical sessions and lectures. Therefore, uh, we are hoping this event to show our collaboration and start new activities. I hope to see you also in uh, 2022, uh, in September, since you will attend the IFTOM Italy conference. And that is one of the uh, activities related to IFTOM Italy and uh, Japan Council of IFTOM uh, collaboration. It will be nice to have uh, an opportunity to meet and plan future activities between Politecnico Torino and uh, Tokyo Tech. Sure, uh, I'm really looking forward to the chance to meet you face to face at the conference held in Italy in the coming September and doing real activities between us. I want to thank you once more and also the audience of this uh, short uh, conversation. I hope to see them in Turin during the next edition of uh, Biennale Tecnologia. Bye. Thank you. Bye.